first army showcase today, we're going to have a look at my Death Guard. So these are my Death Guard. Orcs were my first army and I wanted something that played completely different. Death Guard are slower, more methodical and more elite. The Dark Imperium magazine came out and my friend Gordon wanted to play the Space Marines. So perfect, I don't mind playing the bad guy and I'm happy to paint things that look dirty as well. The host of the Destroyer Hive, Typhus. I've painted Typhus in a different scheme to the rest of my army he and his bodyguards, the Death Shroud Terminators, are painted using a tutorial that I saw on YouTube by JH Miniatures for his uh, Contrast Marines. I'll put a link in the description below so you can see that video as well. Uh, this is more of a green and brown dirty style to help them stand out from the rest of my Heresy era bone coloured uh, Death Guard army. A good time then to show off the Death Shroud Terminators as well, Typhus's bodyguard. Only have three of these models, they were so much fun to paint but they took forever. There's so many great little details in here that you can spend a lot of time on. I'd like to paint some more of the Death Shroud. Maybe I can spend a bit of time trying to convert some models or even just try some alternate poses here so that the two groups of three uh, separate themselves from one another. Games Workshop has a couple of different variants for their Demon Princes. The Nurgle Demon Prince itself is a bit of an older model and I wanted to try something different. I found on the Titan Forge website they have a Lord of Decay, which is the model that I've selected and that I've painted here. To give him wings, I found on Wargame Exclusive they have the Rotten Chaos wings. I'll put a link for both in the bottom below, uh, but with some magnets this was pretty easy work to convert him into a Nurgle Demon Prince with wings. When I decided that I was going to collect and paint Death Guard, I spent a bit of time first trying to come up with an idea of how my army would look and the lore and the theme behind them. I like the bone coloured armour for the Death Guard rather than the green that you see predominantly in the Codex. So I thought for the lore of my army it could be that they're recently mutating so their armour even though it's dirty is still rather intact and not as many tentacles and not as many demons. To help me with collecting my Death Guard without spending too much money, a friend and I were both subscribed to the Warhammer Conquest magazine and we'd swap parts so he could collect the Space Marines and I'd collect the Death Guard. A benefit for us in collecting our armies this way meant that we could work together as each issue would come through, we'd have something to work on for the month and be able to show each other our progress. The majority of the models we would receive in these issues are from the Dark Imperium box set. These are monopose, easy to build, and it means that you'll start to double up a lot. To get around this, I would jump onto different bits websites and also just grab the clippers out and be prepared to cut some of the models up to be able to convert them with different weapons and to put them in different poses all together to make them look a bit unique. So by the time I've swapped helmets and moved a few arms around, my squads of Plague Marines can start to look separate from one another. Space Marines have the new hover tanks and transports being the Repulsor and the Impulsor. For my Death Guard to look new and bulky and intimidating, I purchased the extra armour as well as the dozer kits from Cromlech. I'll put a link in the description for them below as well.
I have a big batch of pox walkers as well as squads of cultists. Today though I thought I'd show off using the Necromonda models as cultists as well. I've used the House Delac models to look like a distinct cult of supporters for the Death Guard. Death Guard have so many different characters and elites. The Fetid Virion, each come in the Warhammer Conquest issues. The Noxious Blightbringer, the Foul Blightspawn, Biologist Putrefier, Plague Surgeon, and here the Tally Man. At first when I was collecting the Death Guard, I didn't like adding any of the Nurglings to the bases or onto the characters, but this might have been one of the first ones that just made me crack up and laugh. I love this little dude running along with the scrolls on the base and had to include him. That would ultimately unleash in me a desire to start putting Nurglings everywhere. The Blightlord Terminators is probably where I went the hardest on the Bits websites to get a variety of all the different weapons they could come with. When they released the rules for Typhus' Army of Renown, I couldn't help myself, and I had to pick up a second box of Blightlord Terminators. At the time, the rules for the Land Raider were absolutely rubbish, but that doesn't matter. It looks amazing, and my Blight Lord Terminators needed their big chariot to ride into battle. There's some extra panels on there for the Death Guard symbols as well. For my Dreadnoughts, I have a Leviathan and a Derradeo, but I also wanted a Hellbrute. That new Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought looks amazing, so I saw an opportunity here to play around with it. Making tentacles with the Green Stuff World Roller and adding some brass symbols, I could give it a more Death Guard look. I magnetised the weapons, rusted up the armour, and he was ready to go. I love this model. Being able to convert and create your own models for armies like Death Guard was one of the biggest draw cards for me. With the Possessed, there was an opportunity here to mix together a box of the Putrid Blight King models from Age of Sigma, as well as a box of Plague Marines. I had a few extra bits and pieces from Tyranids and other armies that I was able to mush it all together and create these mutated variants of Marines. These were just as much fun to build as they were to paint. Being able to add in all that extra gore and rust and weathering and slime was so much fun and really rewarding when I got to the end. The Galapox infected models from the Blackstone Fortress set look so intimidating and they're amazing. I had to find a way to get them into my Death Guard army. The opportunity here was to use them as Chaos Spawn. I thought this captured the style of the various mutations that the Chaos Spawn could have. The drones with the flesh mowers are an absolutely terrifying looking model. I'm glad that the rules reflect it as well for Death Guard. With these, I added things like sand glued onto the blades to give them a heavy rusted corrosion look. I find myself adding the Mephitic Blight Haulers into my Death Guard list, usually first. These models look great and they're tough and durable, and they capture what the Death Guard's about for me.
I was scrolling through Instagram looking for some inspiration on something I could do differently with the Plague Burst crawlers. I saw a user named Prey Terries, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, put the Tyranid talons and legs on the side of their Plague Burst crawlers and they look unreal. So I went for the same on mine, but I just kept the dozers on the front of mine. I have one single Chaos Knight. I picked this model as a challenge to myself because I'd never painted something this size before. It was so much fun and I've magnetized all the bits so he can have all different variants if I decide to use him in a game. I have a lot of time for the different Games Workshop terrain kits. Anything that can give a theme to the battlefield that'll fit one of my armies, I'm down for. The Miasmic Malignifier and Pox Furnace, I thought were a really cool addition with the latest codex. I'd started collecting Death Guard during 8th edition when I was able to combine Nurgle Demons with my Death Guard. So I painted up my own Epidemius which is just the spoiled pox scrivener model on top of a whole bunch of Nurglings. I thought this was a cool looking unique way to capture the model. I don't mind batch painting, but there were so many little Nurgling butts that I painted over the period of about a month to get all these squads completed. I look at my Death Guard army as a completed army, but it doesn't mean that I'll never add anything to it. As they release new models or I look for a painting challenge, I'll go back and add bits and pieces here and there. Looking at it now, I'll probably want to paint up my own Mortarian because I don't have one at the moment, but I'd also like to add some more Rhinos. Maybe having three or four to have a complete mechanized infantry list would be really cool. I've told myself that I don't want to build on the Nurgling Demons, but I also have one eye out for when the Codex does drop. If there's some cool models or something changes, I reckon that'll probably catch me as well. When I think about what cool new models the Death Guard could get, I understand they're already a new army, but I'd love to see a flying transport like a hover tank, similar to the Impulsor. If you're wondering if a Death Guard army is right for you, what I would say one of the bonuses is, you can build a lot of different thematic lists with them. I love to play a mechanized infantry list with Plague Marines inside Rhinos. You can also go elite with Dreadnoughts and Terminators, or you can have a horde style army with cultists and pox walkers. And then on top of that, you can go for a demon list where you've got all these different demon engines zooming around the board and causing havoc. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like below. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can subscribe and let me know in the comments what Death Guard models am I missing from my army that you'd like to see me paint in a further video. Thanks again and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much for sticking around to check out my Death Guard army. There's some other armies I'd like to showcase in the future with my Orcs and my Tyranids, but I'm also keen to get the Death Guard out on the table in a bat report for you so you can see them in action.